Alright everyone out there in guitar land, Mike Heading here. Coming today with a little bluegrass guitar ending lick. You could you could use this as a as a piece of a solo, but I think where this lick would work really well is like a tag. So maybe after you play your solo, a common thing in, in a common thing in bluegrass is to add a little like tag where you kind of just show off your, your last little uh, tricks before you get back into the, the the rhythm or get back into the singing. And this is very common in bluegrass. Banjos do it, mandolins, fiddles, and guitars as well. So this would be a great little spot to use this lick. Let me break down the lick and then I'll show you again a couple spots you could use this idea. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm gonna think out of this G shape for this lick, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide my third finger from uh, the third fret on the D string to the fifth fret. And then I'm gonna put my first finger up on the third fret of the high E string. So it's, I'm sliding into it, and then it's an octave. So you got octaves, right? So I'm sliding in and then playing that high note. Don't slide too quick, so it's one and two. And I think of this as basically this F shape chord, right? If you know your F, but slid up two frets is a G. So again, I'm here, but then I'm using this finger to slide into it. That's what I'm doing there. So a very Tony Rice style thing would be like sliding up. And that's kind of what we're gonna kind of quote uh, Tony Rice a little bit in this lick. So that's what I'm doing. Again, give it a little attitude to start. So, and then I'm gonna go down the notes, third fret. I use my pinky here on the sixth fret. Some people use their third finger, whatever feels more comfortable for you. And then third fret here. And then I'm gonna do a pinky slide on the G string from six to five. That's sliding through that blue note, which is really cool. And then third fret, fifth fret. So let's just get that down. So we have. You could end the lick right there if you wanted, right? But we're gonna add a little bit more to make it more of a tag, so. So what am I doing with the picking there? I'm going down, down again, which helps me play that timing. And then I'm gonna do down up picking. And then right here an up stroke, slide, and then another up. So that's really important because that slide is taking the place of the picked note. So if I did it without the slide, it would be, right there would be a down. I mean, that would even be good practice just to warm up your fingers, too. But what I'm doing is I'm adding that slide, which takes the place of a pick note. So you have to do two ups in a row. That'll help you play the timing. So I'm going. And then five, three, five on the D string. And then I grab my pinky on this fifth fret on the G string. And then third fret. And then quick jump to the third fret on the D string, and then fifth fret. So you have. And if you mute those notes a little bit, it's okay. Just give it a, it's, you know, this lick's supposed to have a little attitude, so. And then our last little lick, we're gonna quick jump down to this low first fret on the A string, which will be like a bluesy note. It's the B flat. And then I'm gonna do a quick one, two, or one, three slide, excuse me. And then fifth fret, and then third fret on the D, and then first, or open third string, excuse me, open third string. It's like a kind of a bluesy G run. So you have. So down, 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 up, down, down. You could also add grab this note here. Instead of the open third string, you could grab it on the fifth fret if you wanted to keep it more closed. Like that. So that's the lick. So we have. And then you use this open third string to get back into your strumming. I would use 
use this as maybe like an ending lick. So maybe you're doing like nine pound hammer. So that ending to nine pound hammer is, you know, uh, G, C, and then G, D right here. And then you'd be back into strumming, right? So again, it's, it's a tag lick. You could also use it to start a solo, but but I would, I would use it as a, a tag, the ending to a solo, that, that G run at the end is like a great, like kind of you planted your flag in your solo and you're like, yeah, I'm done, you know? So I think, you know, having that really bluesy G run at the end just kind of sets up the end of your solo. Like, yes, I'm, I'm finished. Let's get back into the singing. Let's get back into the vocals. Um, you know, so that's a great little spot to use that lick. So again, what I would practice is maybe doing like whatever little D lick, you know, and then slide up, right? So you'd have one, two, and three, and four, and one. You know, it doesn't really matter what D lick you do. You could go, you know, so I'm just kind of working out of this D shape here. lick would work better on a bluesy song you know I wouldn't use this on like a really happy song you know like Amazing Grace or, or something like that or even like a Will of the Circle Be Unbroken would probably be a little bit too too major sounding for this lick but Man of Constant Sorrow, Nine Pound Hammer, you know Sitting on Top of the World, any of those kind of songs with that little bit of bluesy flavor would would work perfectly for this ending lick. Okay, so lastly, now that you've got the lick down, or I'll show you two more things. One is we basically have all closed notes except for that very last note. So if we if we modify that last note, like I said, to the fifth fret, right there, now we can, we have a closed position lick. So closed position means we're not using any open strings. So what's cool about that is once you get it down, you can move it around. So maybe I want to do it in A. You know, so now I can move it around wherever I want. Even if I don't know what, what key I'm in, I can do it in B flat. That's why it's really important to use the same fingers each time. You know, so when I move it up, up or down, I'm not changing my, my left hand fingering or my right hand picking. And that's gonna help my brain hopefully remind myself that I've already played this lick. Hopefully I can cue and tap into my muscle memory, right? So let's practice it one more time up in A. So right there, and then you can be back to your A, or otherwise you're right here too. You could go into like your either an A minor or a major right there. You know this this lick would also work on a minor song. So if we were playing like a G a G minor style song, you know like a Kentucky Mandolin or I'm trying to think Wayfaring Stranger. If you're doing that in A minor, let's say, you know you could go. Remember, a lot of these bluegrass style licks, sometimes they're ha they'll, they'll play minor sounding lead notes over major sounding chords. A perfect example of that would be like Man of Constant Sorrow, right? The, the chords are G, C, and D, but the melody notes are, are very minor sounding, but we're not playing a G minor backing chord. And that's, that's something that happens a lot in bluegrass. Pretty Polly, you know, uh, Man of Constant Sorrow, a lot of those kind of bluesy songs. Again, we're playing major chords over, or playing minor lead notes over major chords. Very popular and common in bluegrass. So remember, you can use these kind of minor bluesy licks in G bluesy songs or in G minor bluesy songs as well, right? Okay, so practice that, move it around and Give that some practice. Hopefully it helps you out. Keep picking and good luck.